Hello and welcome to a tutorial on creating a squinched video for use in Planet Coaster. I'm Aladdin Boy, and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating a technique I've developed that uses Adobe After Effects to create these squinched videos. First, a little background. The squinching process was originally developed for the amazing adventures of Spider-Man at Universal Studios and refers to the process of distorting a video to compensate for perspective distortion from a moving ride vehicle. It creates the illusion of 3D space behind or sometimes in front of the screen and has become increasingly popular in theme park attractions around the world. While the original process used for squinching is patented and involves custom software and hardware, my method uses off-the-shelf software and is pretty flexible. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into Planet Coaster. So here we are in a pretty simple park, and I've put together a pretty basic layout here for this tracked ride. This is the, uh, the Huntsman. A couple of things to note about the squinching process, or at least the method that I've come up with. Once you create the video media for the screen, you cannot change the path of the track. The speed, shape, any stop sections in the track, those can't change, at least not in the area of the track where the screen is visible. So in my example, once the ride vehicle enters this room, I can't change the track. I can't change the speed, I can't add any stop sections. Additionally, I can't change the position of the screen in relation to the track. I can't reposition the screen further back or on a different wall or anything. At this point, it is all locked in place. Because what we're going to be doing is recording or capturing this section of the track via a screen capture and extracting the motion of the ride vehicle through this route using one of the in-game security cameras. There it is. Now before we do the recording, there's a couple of other things we have to set up. The first is we have to create a trigger sequence. So let's add a trigger. Put it about here. In my setup, I've got doors here, so this is a convenient place to put the trigger. This is going to be what activates the video. So I'll link the doors and the screen. We'll have them start playing at the same time. And right now, my screen uh, just has a solid white still image on it. It's just a PNG. This is important because when we go to make the recording, we have to be able to see when the screen turns on. That's how we'll know how to time everything in relationship to the trigger. And that will be triggered when the ride vehicle gets to this point right here. Now I think we're ready. Let's jump into the security camera. And turn off that overlay with L. And we'll look down and get that lined up. The reason that I'm using the security cameras in game is because they have this zoom ability. Ideally, we would be capturing this using an orthographic view, where there is no perspective distortion at all but there really isn't a way of doing that in Planet Coaster, at least not right now. And as you can see, there is some perspective distortion going on here. Using the security camera to zoom in minimizes that distortion, and in my testing, this is really good enough for the, the squinching method to work. Of course, if there were any elevation changes in my track, this would not work. That would be a problem. And I'll talk a little bit at the end of this video about potential ways for solving that problem. So now let's start the ride and get this lined up. It's helpful to have the screen parallel or perpendicular to the edges of your view or the screen recording window, but it's not critical. So now would be when you would start your screen recording using whatever software you choose. Fraps, OBS, anything would work. Oh, there goes the screen. What we're going to be doing is bringing this footage into Adobe After Effects and tracking the position of the car. I'm going to be tracking the car manually, but I suppose you could use motion tracking 
I personally have not had great luck with it, so I'll just be doing it by hand, but if you have a more complex track layout, maybe you could save a few minutes doing automatic motion tracking. And there we go. I'll go ahead and stop the screen recording, and let's switch over to Adobe After Effects. I am using Adobe After Effects Creative Cloud 2018, but I suppose any version of After Effects should work as long as it supports Video Copilot's Element 3D and the CC Power Pin effect. Those are the two critical effects. So let's go ahead and bring our screen recording in. There it is. And we'll drop it onto a new composition. Lovely. Now, we need to find where our trigger is, and that's the moment that the screen turns on. So... So... There it is. And we need the exact frame that the screen turns on. And you can go frame by frame by using page up and page down. There it is. And that's the exact frame where the screen turns on, which means that's the exact frame where our car hits the trigger. I'm going to hit B to set the beginning of our work area to this point right here. And then I'll scrub through to find the point where the screen is no longer visible to the car. And that would be right about here. And I'll hit N to set the end of our work area. Right click and choose Trim Comp to Work Area. So now this begins right at the point where the screen turns on. The next thing we're going to do is create a new null object. This is going to be our car position, and we're going to use this to track the position of the car as it moves through the scene. So we'll call this car position. Now we could just move this around and track the position of our car right here in two dimensions, but since we're going to be adding 3D objects into the scene, we really want this to be done in 3D. So we'll set the null object to be a 3D layer, and let's go ahead and make the background a 3D layer as well. Now because in-game we were looking down at the ground, let's rotate both the null object and the screen recording by 90 degrees. W for the rotate tool, or WOTATE. And if you hold down shift, it will snap to 90 degrees. And the screen recording, so they're both flat, just like that. And we want our null object to be at the same height as our screen recording, which has a Y value of 540. So let's give the null object a Y value of 540 as well. Now I'm going to switch from our active view to the top view. The top view in After Effects is an orthographic view looking down on our scene. And now we're going to animate our null object, its position, to move with the car through the scene. Make sure we turn on keyframing. I'm going to put it right on top of the dummy in the middle of the first row. Since this is the position of the ride cam I'm going to be using in-game. And now it's just a simple process of animating the position of the null object as the car moves through the scene. I'll fast forward through a lot of this since it's pretty tedious. I'll go ahead and stop the time lapse because as you can see here, we're getting these rather harsh linear keyframes on our null object, rather than the smooth curves of the track. To fix this, let's select all of our keyframes for our position, right click on one of them, and select Keyframe Interpolation. And I'm going to set the spatial interpolation to Auto Bezier, and that will make these curve smoothly along the track. And there we go. So now you can see that our null object tracks with a car as it moves through the scene. And this is where our 3D camera is going to be positioned a little bit later on. So now that we have the position of our car, we also need the position of the screen. The squinching effect is determined by the relative position of the car, or viewer, and the four corners of the screen the video is being shown on. So let's make two new null objects. And we'll call this one bottom left. 
and this one bottom right. And we need to make sure that these are also 3D layers as well. Now let's get these positioned. We'll take the bottom left and put it at the bottom left corner of the screen. The more accurate we can get this, the better. That looks pretty good. And then we'll do the same for the bottom right null object. And there we go. Okay, now that we have our bottom left and bottom right null objects, we need to create null objects for the top left and top right corners of the screen. And you may think it's as easy as putting them right here, but that won't work. Right now we're in the top view, which in After Effects is orthographic. It has no perspective distortion. But our screen recording from Planet Coaster does have perspective distortion. So we need to actually figure out mathematically the position of the top right and top left corners of the screen. Now we know the position of the bottom left and bottom right corners, and we can get the distance between them using a simple expression. With one of our null objects selected, I'll go Expression Controls, Slider Control. This is just a numeric value that isn't connected to anything right now. And we're going to use it with an expression to calculate the distance between our two null objects. So I'll hit P to bring up the position of our two null objects, and I'm going to Alt-click on the stopwatch for the slider control to add an expression. And the expression that I want is here, under Vector Math Length. You can see that there are two different functions called Length. We want the one with point 0.1 and point 0.2. And for point 0.1, let's highlight that and use the Pick Whip to select the bottom right position. And for point 0.2, we'll use the Pick Whip to select the bottom left position. Now when we hit Enter, this number here, 601.32, is the exact distance in pixels between our two null objects. Now this is useful because we know the in-game dimensions of our screen. It is 16 meters wide by 9 meters tall. 16 by 9. And since we now know that in our screen recording, 16 meters equals 601.32 pixels, we can do some basic math to figure out where we should position our null objects for the top left and top right. And after doing the math, it turns out that we want our top left and top right nulls to be 338.2425, which I'll round to 338.25, above our bottom nulls. So now we can delete our slider control, since we don't need it anymore. We'll take these two, duplicate them, and move them to the top. And we'll call this one top left, and this one top right. And let's use P to bring up the position for these two. The coordinate system in After Effects sets the origin point to the top left corner of the screen. So to move our null objects up, we want to actually subtract 338 and a quarter from the current Y value. So let's subtract 338.25 from here. And we can actually just copy this value to the other one. So now, if we were to create a new 3D camera, and the focal length doesn't matter yet, we're going to be changing that later, and switch to our active camera, we can now see that we have our four null objects positioned and marking the four corners of the screen. Perfect. So the next step is to actually add things into our scene. That's going to be what is behind the screen, which I guess you could consider a window into another room. And to do that, we're going to be using Element 3D by Video Copilot. And to do that, I'll create a new solid, make sure that it's comp size, and we'll call this E3D. And we'll go Effect, Video Copilot, Element. I'll go into the scene setup, and I already have a 3D object set up and configured. 
So here we have our little jail scene. Now this isn't my model, I got this off of BlendSwap, and I'll put the link down in the description. And the only two changes that I'm going to make here are I'm going to change the alignment, this is basically the anchor point, to back. And that just puts this little 3D gizmo here at the front. This will make it easier to position later on. The other thing I'm going to do here is go into the environment and change this to something with a little bit more contrast. Let's try this one. Yeah, yeah that one looks good. And this will just give us a little bit more contrast. I'm going to be doing a lighting pass at the very end to make it pretty, but for now, this is fine. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And there we go, there is our 3D object in our scene. Now of course it's in the wrong position, so let's get this into place. I'll go into group 1, which is where the object is, and the particle replicator, and the rotation. That should be set to negative 90. And let's go into the top camera. And we can push this back along the x-axis so that the front of it, the front of our room here, is right in line with the bottom of the screen. And I'm having some trouble seeing that, so let's turn down the transparency of that layer, say 50%. Now that we can see the screen a little bit better. We also want to try to position this along the Z axis so it's centered on the screen. And that looks pretty good. And we need to scale it as well, and that's under particle look. My memory from doing this before is that 14.5 is a decent size for this specific scene. Yeah, this is just trying to get it to match the scale in Planet Coaster. The room that this is in is going to end up being 8 meters tall, and in Planet Coaster, it's 9 meters to the top of the screen. So that's roughly two stories, things are a little bit big in Planet Coaster, so the top of our screen should be around two floors. And if I go to my active camera, oop, can't quite see it yet, let me go to the front view, and maybe turn the opacity back up on that. And you can see we need to move it up. So under the Particle Replicator, I'll slide the Y position, there we go. This is not critical to get this part perfectly aligned. If it's a little off, it will just look like there's a step up or a step down into the room. So now if we go back to our active camera, we can see, yeah, the, the top of our screen is about two stories tall. Yeah, it's good. Maybe push this back a little. Uh, oh, negative 10. Yeah. And go back to the top view. Make sure this is still aligned with the screen. There we go. And I think we have our 3D room all set up. That looks pretty good to me. The next step is going to be to get our camera set up. And we already know the position of our camera, that's our car position null object. So I'm going to switch back to the top view there. And what we could do is we could parent our camera to the null object. And that would work to move it around, but as you can see it's not actually in the same place as our car. It's just keeping the same relative position. And that's not really what we want. We want it to have the same exact position as our null object. So rather than parent it, let's clear that parent, we're going to link together the position values. And we'll do that by alt clicking on the stopwatch and using the pick whip to select our null object's position value. And now you can see that our camera is tied perfectly to our car all the way through our scene. But you can also see that it's pointing in the wrong direction, and that's because of the way After Effects handles where the camera is pointing. You can either orient the camera by setting a rotation value, or you can set this little thing here. This is the point of interest. There it is. And wherever you point it, the camera will always be looking at it. 
So let's put this right on our screen, right about in the middle. And if we go into our active camera, actually uh, we want the front camera. We want to make sure this is centered between our top and bottom nulls, right about there. Now from this view, we can see that our camera is too low. It's on the ground, and it should be higher up. It should be at the height of the right cam in-game. And as it turns out, the exact height of the dummies in-game, for this ride at least, is almost exactly 2 meters. And again, we need to convert that into pixel values. We determined earlier that 16 meters, the width of our screen, is 601.32 pixels. And 2 meters is 1 8th of 16, so the height of our camera in pixels should be 1 8th of 601.32 and that comes out to 75.165. Awesome. But we can't directly change the height of our camera because we've linked the position of our camera to our car position null object. What we can do is create another null object, call this camera height adjustment, and we'll parent our camera to that. And let's make sure that our position is set to 0, 0, and parent it. And make sure that it's a 3D layer. Now, if we were to take our Y value, you can see that the Y value will shift our camera up and down. And this would be negative 75, round to 0.2. And it looks like because we shifted the position of our camera, we have to fix our focal point. Let's bring that back down. Perfect. There. Now if we switch to our active camera, that looks about right. Let's back up a bit. Yeah, that looks good. Now we need to animate the zoom, or the focal length, of our camera. We want to take advantage of as many pixels in our composition as we can. So I'll go into the camera, find the zoom, and keyframe that. I think I'll also turn on keyframing for our point of interest, since we'll probably have to adjust that as we go. So I'll zoom in, and what we're trying to do is to get the four corners of our screen as close to the edge of the comp as possible, while still keeping them inside the comp boundaries. So... So, looks like I need to move my point of interest down a bit. And maybe zoom out a little, zoom in a little bit more. And move ahead. And we'll just keep doing this for the entire duration of our scene. I'll fast forward through this since it's rather tedious and it's the longest part of the squinching process. There we go. I've got this all animated, and the anchor points of my screen corner nulls stay within the boundaries of the comp for the entire time. They get pretty close to the edge a couple of times, and that's okay. Ooh, oh, this one does go outside the comp boundaries. Let's fix that. Here, there we go. Now comes the real magic, the actual squinching step. And I'm going to do that with a new adjustment layer. We can call this Squinch. And I'm going to add an effect under Distort CC Power Pin. This is very similar to the Corner Pin effect if you've ever used that, but this effect has a little checkbox here that says Unstretch. And if we check that, it sort of, I guess, reverses the effect. 
and that is what drives this entire squinching process. What we need to do is we need these four points to follow our screen corner null objects. The problem is that these are 2D coordinates. You can see here there's only an X and a Y. And our screen corner null objects have 3D coordinates, X, Y, and Z. And to convert between the two, we're going to use an expression. So I'll click on the stopwatch. And this one is the top left, so we're going to use a pick whip to get the top left null object. And the expression that we're going to use is dot two comp, then in brackets, zero comma zero comma zero. And now you can see that our corner is stuck to that null object. Now let's do that for the other three corners. So top right. Bottom right. And bottom left. There we go. So now we have the corners all linked up to our null objects. And here's where the magic happens. Check unstretched, and boom. And now this is basically done. This is our squinched video. And all that's really left is to make it look pretty. I'll fast forward through this part because there are plenty of Element 3D tutorials out there that can explain the settings much better than I can. All I'm doing here is adding a light to the back of the scene, turning on shadows and ambient occlusion, and tweaking the brightness of the environment map I set up earlier. Maybe add in some glow for that back window, and a little bit of color correction. That looks okay. Now the last thing to do is to add this to our render queue. I'll we'll give it a good name. And hit render. And here it is in Planet Coaster after converting it to a WebM video. Now the colors aren't great due to the way that Planet Coaster handles lit screens at night, but you can see that the perspective shifts and warps as the car moves through the scene. Now, of course, this is a pretty boring example. This is just an empty room. But using this technique, we could do just about anything. We could have robots breaking through that rear wall. We could have a mineshaft collapsing, jet airplanes crashing through the ceiling. Um, the riders could be nearly run over by a subway train. There's really no limit to what you could do with this. And if you're into advanced 3D modeling, most of the work could probably be done directly inside of Blender or 3ds Max or whatever your 3D modeler of choice is. If you're not very comfortable with modeling, you could do what I did and download a free 3D model off of the internet, or you could make your scene in SketchUp and export it as an OBJ file. Now there are some limitations to this process. Since we're tracking the car from an overhead screen capture, the track has to be flat, no changes in elevation. And I suppose that if you really wanted to, you could create a secondary screen capture from the side and try to line up the two screen captures, and maybe trace out, I don't know. There's probably some way of doing it that will take into account uh, track elevation changes, but I've not messed around much with that. Also, because of the power pin effect, the closer the cars get to the screen, 
the lower resolution the footage appears to be. If I had to guess, the uh, traditional way of solving that problem is simply to render the source footage at a ridiculously high resolution and scale it down, but I don't know. These are all problems that I'll bet can be overcome one way or another because they have been overcome. You can see this in theme parks around the world. I just don't know the exact details of how they do it. But this technique works pretty well in Planet Closer, and I think we've really only just begun to scratch the surface of what can be done with the uh, in-game screens. And I can't wait to see what you all do with the technique. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.